Hello, everybody. Uh, it's about time to start, but uh, in, the, in the remaining 30 seconds before the official start time, I have one sticker. Now, so the important thing about this sticker is that uh, it is one of three that are at this conference. I've asked everybody, and there are only three. So we printed up a bunch of these for the last summit in Berlin, and apparently we thought that would last forever, and we were wrong. They're all gone except for these three. One of them has a dog ear, so let's call it two are left. So I'm gonna give one sticker away at the end of this talk if somebody asks a pertinent, keyword pertinent, question about Zool that I haven't heard before. So start thinking. My name is James Blair. Um, I started the Zool project. I'm the current project uh, lead. And uh, I have a business called Acme Gating, which supports Zool, helps uh, enterprises run it, um, custom development, consulting, that sort of thing. And uh, I also uh, volunteer my time as part of the Open Dev infrastructure team. So I help run the Zool that OpenStack uses for its development, uh, the Garrett, uh, those systems. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is uh, something that we use the OpenDev Zool for. Uh, basically, it's a really specific use case for how we use Zool, and it's kind of an introduction to um, all of the, the, the power that you can get from Zool. So what we do is whenever we want to make a change to, say, the production Garrett system, the production Zool system, there's a Grafana, there's mailing list servers, there's all of the things you need to run an open source project. Whenever we want to make a change to any of those, we, uh, we, 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 it's all GitOps, right? So uh, we make a change to the Git repository, we push it up for code review, and as part of that, Zool deploys an entire ephemeral system. So if, uh, if we're talking about making a change to, to the Garrett server, it's going to get a VM, uh, spin up the Garrett server using the new, the new code with the change that's, that's been proposed, uh, and run some tests on it, possibly let some humans evaluate it, kind of depends on what we're going for, uh, and then when we're done, it destroys that uh, and uh, like it was never there. And so we, this gives us a very high degree of confidence about any of the changes that we want to make to our production environment. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how, um, how Zool does that. Uh, the, the, we call this process speculative ephemeral production because um, uh, because uh, we like using those words in various combinations. Uh, speculative meaning that that um, we're talking about like what happens if we make this change. So we're not we're not we're not testing what what happened after we made this change. It's more like well what if we did this? What it would look like? And then ephemeral, of course, referring to the fact that we spin up the new copy uh, and then delete it when we're done testing it. So uh, Zool is, as I've alluded to, the project gating system that was originally developed for OpenStack. Um, part of the reason why we developed it in the first place for OpenStack is OpenStack has all of these different projects like Nova and Glance and Keystone and yada, yada, yada. And, um, and they all kind of get developed independently, um, and, but at the end of the day, we want them all to work together and ship something called OpenStack. And, uh, and so Zool is really designed for that use case, for having lots of projects, lots of Git repositories, and then incorporating them in, in various ways to produce uh, some whole. And I think I've talked about the other stuff here. So um, why, why is Zool useful for this use case, this speculative ephemeral production? I said that right twice in a row now. Um, so uh, the first is uh, Ansible jobs. So uh, Zool's native job language is Ansible. And when we were looking to, to, uh, to, to create Zool, we we're like, oh, well, should we write our own YAML language uh, to, to talk about how to run things on remote servers? And we're like, no, you know what? There's actually a thing out there that does that already. It's called Ansible. So, um, so yeah, just like how many people use Ansible to say, run this particular command or whatever on some remote machine or 100 remote machines or whatever. The same thing is true in testing. You, 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 know, you wanna get a test machine, you wanna run a command on it. Maybe your job is complicated and you need a Nova and a Glance and you need to run the commands on both of those and they're different machines. You can describe how to do that in Ansible. Um, 
Zool is Git driven, as I've, I've discussed. So all our, our, our production infrastructure is Git ops. Um, Zool is triggered on changes to Git repository. Its purpose is to mediate the merging of changes to Git repositories, so only merge them when they successfully pass tests. So that's a natural fit. Um, Zool allows uh, centralized or decentralized control. Um, so it, uh, it, you know what, actually, I'm gonna skip ahead of here. So I've got uh, what I call the Goldilocks control model, right? Where it's like maybe, maybe you want everything to be centrally defined. You've got like a CI team and they do everything. Um, you can do that with Zool. You can, you can say these are the job definitions, these are the repos where those are. Um, or maybe you want to give uh, individual teams more control, say that I, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna run these jobs on this Git repository. Um, maybe you need something in the middle. Maybe all of your projects need to run sort of a, a, a basic set of jobs. You've got some standards around code coverage and unit tests and things like that, and you want everybody to do that and then have projects sort of add on uh, what, what they need as well. So uh, Zool allows really anything uh, anywhere on the spectrum. Um, Cross-repo dependencies. This is really important for this particular use case. Um, we're, we're talking about not only our deployment code, but sometimes we wanna make changes to the applications that we're deploying. So with Zool, you can set it up so that, say you wanted to not only just change something about how you deploy the Garrett server, let's say you wanted to write a change to add new functionality to Garrett and then deploy it in our environment and see what that looks like. This is a real thing. Somebody in the audience has actually written this change um, where, where it, it, it added, uh, so, so we've got Gitty, right, in OpenDev, and we needed Garrett to, to link to Gitty, and so we actually had to make a change to Garrett to implement that and then test how that works in our deployment. So um, thanks, Clark, for, for, for doing that. Um, then uh, finally, speculative execution, right? This is, this is uh, really what it comes down to. Um, uh, you, can, you can make changes to libraries, you make changes to front ends, you can make changes to your infrastructure deployment code, um, and, and like I said, uh, get um, an entire ephemeral environment that, that tests all of those together. So um, Zool uses a number of potential um, environments for running its uh, tests, right? So um, you can uh, tell Zool that you need a virtual machine to run a test on. You could tell Zool that um, you need to run tests on Kubernetes, on OpenShift, in pods, whatever. Um, Zool is really flexible about um, how you, uh, what actual environment it's running its tests on. Um, so whatever kind of in, uh, ephemeral infrastructure you need to do this particular kind of problem, uh, Zool should be able to handle it. In, uh, in the case of OpenDev, uh, since OpenDev runs on OpenStack clouds, um, our, our natural bias is sort of to run things on OpenStack virtual machines. So um, it, when I get into to, to the example in a minute, um, this is all gonna be on, uh, on basically on virtual machine, uh, OpenStack virtual machines that we spin up and, and deploy this on. So um, because I'm kind of a, 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 a sort of a hands-on person, I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna walk you through a, a very specific example of how we do this, um, our Grafana deployment. So I, I chose this because it's um, probably pretty relatable. Um, maybe not everybody in the room runs a Garrett, but probably more people uh, run a Grafana. Um, so uh, it's uh, basically there's a, there's a host out there. You can go to it right now, grafana.opendev.org. Um, and that's where we have uh, a lot of metrics for the Zool system and the other systems that, that we manage. Um, and it is completely part of the system that I'm talking about. You could, you could uh, check out the, the repository with all of our deployment code. You can make a change, push it up for review, uh, that sort of thing. Try to make it a good change, like maybe not delete the Grafana server, that's not helpful. Um, so uh, what do we do, what are we gonna look at? So there's, 
there's the, the, um, the base playbook. What we, um, at the beginning of this test job, what we do is we, we, we run the base playbook that we run on every system, right? Like this is the one that adds our SSH keys and adds the firewall rules and you know, turns on or off mail as appropriate, all of those things you have to do on every server. Um, then there's the Grafana playbook, which actually deploys Grafana itself. Uh, the inventory file is interesting here, right? Because in production, we have one inventory file. In testing, uh, we have a different inventory file. So how do we manage that uh, is, is kind of an interesting question that I'll talk about. Um, we have a bastion host that we call Bridge. Um, actually, I think now we call it Bridge 99 in testing and we call it Bridge 02 in production. Uh, anyway, um, uh, there's a bastion host and that's where we run our deploy, our production deployment playbooks. Um, but in our ephemeral test environment, not only do we need an ephemeral Grafana server, we need an ephemeral Bastion server too. So this job is actually not only going to spin up uh, the, the server that we're testing, it's also going to spin up the Bastion server. So we're not testing like, does this thing work in this really contrived test scenario? It's actually, no, if we spun up a brand new Grafana server and a brand new Bastion server and then run the production playbook just like we run it on the real Bastion server, is that going to work? So that's involved in this as well. Uh, and then of course there's, you know, Ansible configuration files. So um, in Zool, you define jobs uh, via YAML because, I mean, what else would you do? Um, so there's a job that we have called system config run Grafana, which is a weird mouthful, but that's like follows a naming system that means things to, to some of us. Um, uh, it, uh, this next thing on it, this is slightly abbreviated, by the way, just so there's, there's some more boring stuff, but this is the interesting bits. The next thing on there is, is uh, requires line, which says, basically, in short, it says, if for some reason you decided you needed to build a new Grafana container image, like a new Grafana Docker image, say somebody was also updating the Docker file for Grafana, then, then make sure you do that first. Um, so, because this job requires the output of that other one. If you're not actually making a change to that, then that's fine, it'll just run this with the, the current um, Gravana container image. So again, this is getting back to that sort of speculative execution, cross repo dependency thing. It doesn't really matter where the Grafana container image is defined. Uh, if it's in another repo, that's fine. We can, we can use the one that's, that's built in that other repo. Um, so uh, this, this rabbit hole goes really deep in terms of how, uh, how much, uh, how many unmerged changes to the entire system you can incorporate into it. Um, the required projects means check out these Git repositories, right? So the system config project and the project config pro man, we're, I'm gonna be upfront, we're bad at naming. Um, anyway, these are important Git repos uh, that have our production configuration and we're gonna need them on disk to actually uh, run some of this. Uh, so the next thing is the node set. This says, Zool, I'm gonna need two servers. One of them we're gonna call Bridge 99 and the other one we're gonna call Grafana 01. So Bridge 99 is a tiny cheat because it turns out there are a few things that you have to do on, a, on uh, an ephemeral Bastion host that you can't actually do on a production Bastion host and vice versa. Um, so uh, Bridge 99 is, is basically, you know, as, as close to our production Bastion host as we can possibly get. Um, so uh, also, uh, it gives us a warm fuzzy that you know we're never going to accidentally shell into the, the real one. Anyway, so um, create the, the the new Bastion host, create the new Grafana server. Um, our Bastion host uh, actually isn't running Bionic anymore, is it? it? No, it's been upgraded to Focal, so I need to update the slide. Anyway, it says what what operating systems to to ask OpenStack for, what what flavors, um, and uh, then there's some job variables. So our our, um, our playbooks uh, look for these variables. And basically, we're, we're, we have playbooks that run playbooks. And so this is saying, hey, big main playbook, run these other small playbooks. And these other small playbooks are like the Let's Encrypt playbook and the Grafana service deployment playbook. So these are, these are the things that actually deploy the service. Um, and, uh, and those are our actual production playbooks that we're running in our test environment. Um, so the, the, the test run, what it does is it starts off by running 
a playbook that, uh, that we, we call the base pre-run playbook. Um, that sets up our, our test host. Um, it uh, sets up any mirrors that we're using in our test environment, um, that sort of thing. And then we run the base playbook. And again, this is, this is, this is the, uh, the, the thing where we, uh, it, eventually the purpose of this is to like install our SSH keys and all that stuff, right? But uh, the first thing that it does as part of that is it takes the Zool inventory and creates an Ansible inventory file. So Zool has its own inventory for running Ansible, um, but because of the, the way we're testing this, we're, we're testing this by um, having Zool's copy of Ansible run uh, a second copy of Ansible, which is, again, exactly how we do it in production. So this is the point where, say you use Terraform or something like that, and you want to do this with Terraform. You would have Zool's Ansible playbook run Terraform, right? But uh, since, since we use Ansible for our production, we're going to have our Zool Ansible run our uh, sort of nested Ansible. So as part of that, we take the inventory file that Zool created, and, uh, and we create a, a new inventory file to, to hand it to our, our nested copy of Ansible. Um, then, then we run the actual base playbook, the thing with the SSH keys and all that. Um, then we run the, the playbooks that we specified previously, like the Let's Encrypt in the Service Grafana playbooks. We call those the, that's the run playbook that does that. Uh, and then we have a test playbook. So this is, so the run playbook is do the thing you do in production. The test playbook is, well, this is, this is a, uh, another playbook we run after the end of that, and that does things like run the test info program. I don't know if, if everybody's familiar with that. If not, it's basically a Python program that's sort of like unit tests for production systems. So it does, you write tests that are things like, is my service up? If I talk to it, do I, do I get the expected response? And things like that. So um, we run that playbook after this, and that's, how we use to decide in an automated way whether the uh, change is good or bad, and we vote positive or negative on it. Um, so yeah, sorry, like I said, the, the test playbook is checks if ports are listening, HTTP queries, any other things that we wanna do. Um, oh, also, we might wanna capture the logs from our ephemeral test system, because our, our logs aren't going to go to the normal place where production logs go. We need to pull them off of the test system. So that's something that we don't do in our normal production playbooks, but we do need to do in this environment. Um, so, so yeah, sort of anything you, you, you know, after you've, you've simulated your production environment, um, anything else that you wanna do after that, we put in our test playbook. So when this job runs, uh, if you go to Zool and look at the build result, result it's gonna look something like this. Um, so here's, here's a, a random change that I, that I selected. I actually don't even know what it does, um, but um, uh, you, you can see the, 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 uh, that, that it finished successfully um, and some other sort of metadata about the, the change. Down here at the bottom, there's a bunch of tabs, task summary and whatnot, and I'll walk through that real quick. Um, so the task summary looks like this. Uh, it's basically, when you run Ansible, uh, you know, at the end, it's like, hey, here's the host that I ran a certain number of tasks on. This is the web version, the Zool web version of that. So uh, we had a Bridge 99 host and a Grafana 01 host, uh, and we ran a bunch of stuff on them, and everything was good. Um, over on the console tab, um, this is a, a kind of interactive um, recording of what Zool's Ansible did. So you can see that it ran the playbooks that I was talking about, the run base pre, um, the, the run base playbook, uh, and then inside of those playbooks, you can see a summary of, of each of the tasks. And if you click on it, you can drill down into all the perimeters for the tasks and everything. So it's, it's pretty handy for, for debugging. Um, if you pulled any logs off of the system, this is where they'll be. So you can see that, that for the Grafana server, we, we pull off the, um, like the IP tables rules, the syslog, the mail server logs for probably no particular reason because I don't think this sends mail, but they're there anyway. Uh, and then the Docker um, uh, logs as well. And uh, the way OpenDev runs Grafana is via, like it's via Docker Compose. So this is gonna be the, the, the Docker Compose logs. And then under artifacts, um, if, 
uh, if you if the job built any artifacts uh, like you know a tarball or a container image or something like that, it would be here. Um, for these jobs, well, we actually do something um, a, a couple of, of interesting things. Uh, there's the ARA report because we're running a nested version of Ansible inside of this. We actually have the nested version um, use ARA to generate an output of all of its tasks. Um, and then we have, uh, we take screenshots. So we do like a Selenium thing uh, so that you can, if you make a change to the Grafana server, you can actually get screenshots of Grafana running your change. Uh, and that's all automated. Uh, so here's uh, the, the, uh, the ARA output from the, the, the inner playbook. So at this point, you know, there's nothing like this is, this is running something that's uh, just like we would run in production. And, and this is the same output that we would get from our production servers. Uh, likewise, uh, we, have, we have one thing, I don't know if you've noticed, everything else has a dark theme up to this point, uh, but our, our test infra system does not. Uh, so we'll be blinded by the white background uh, test results there. But uh, you can see that, that um, it, you know, we've got unit tests for all of these things uh, and, and uh, you can drill down and see if they passed or failed there. Um, and then here is one of the screenshots um, that, that the test automatically took. So it spun up a Grafana server and went to the main page and took a screenshot. So there it is. Um, and then uh, as sort of a bonus, um, not only can you run uh, the, uh, this ephemeral test environment that I'm talking about, but using the same playbooks and everything, you can run actual, um, the actual production code. So we have a job on the system as well called InfraProd Service Grafana, and that um, runs the same playbooks but in the production context on the production server. So if we made a change to Grafana and push that up for review and, and everything looked good and we merged that change, um, then this job is going to run those playbooks against the production system. So there's, uh, uh, there's kind of a lot of magic behind this that I've glossed over. Um, and and uh, one thing in particular I think is interesting about all of this is, is basically the, the problem in general of how do you speculatively con test container images. And, um, and we've solved it, actually we've solved it a couple ways in OpenDev, um, but we're using only one of those right now. Um, and, uh, and so really quickly, I wanna kind of go over why this is challenging and what choices we've made so far and what choices might be available in the future. So there's a, a, a few problems here. One is building speculative container images. So um, even, even the act of doing a Docker build on a container image in, in Zool's idea of a speculative environment, that can be complicated because your container image, say Grafana, might be might depend on another container image in the same system, like a lower level layer, um, and it that container image itself might have its own pending changes. So you might want to make a change to say a base image that you use for all of your services, and then you might want to make a change to the Grafana image that that is built on top of that. Um, well, if you're doing that, you need to. Uh, like you can't, you can't, it's really awkward to change the from line in your Grafana container image to point to some unmerged random uh, container image that's out there. You could do it, but it's a bad idea. You're gonna forget to do it, you're gonna get it wrong, you're gonna forget to remove it when you're done testing, whatever, right? You wanna leave the from line the way it is. You want the from line at the top of the Grafana image to say from my base container image um, and still have the system pick up any dependent changes that you're working on there. So, um, so there's the problem of how do you build chains of speculative container images and get all of those changes in there. Um, then once you've got those images built, how do you run them if you're using Docker and how do you run them if you're using uh, Kubernetes? And those turn out to be very different answers. So um, when you're, um, doing speculative container execution. Uh, what, so what we, it, it turns out, the, the answer is different if you're using Docker Hub or if you're using something else. 
Um, and that's because the, 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 the folks at Docker Inc, they, they made one way of configuring mirrors uh, to, uh, for, for images if you're using Docker Hub. And the way that they made for if you're using images anywhere else is they said, don't do that. So um, if you're using Docker and your images are published on Docker Hub, then what you can do is uh, configure Docker to use a mirror. And what we, what we do in OpenDev in this case is we configure something called a build set registry, which is, you guessed it, an ephemeral registry that only exists for the lifetime of this test. Uh, and we put the images that, that the test needs in there and then the, the job uses them sort of transparently. Now, if you're not using Docker Hub, then probably what you should do is not use the Docker command line, instead use Podman or its friends. Um, and uh, if you're doing that, you can configure um, build set registry mirrors no matter where your images are hosted. Um, and then there's a third option, which is you can, you can kind of cheat a little bit. Instead of doing this mirror thing, you could pre-prepare -pre -pre your, which might just be preparing, your container environment um, by sort of sideloading the images into it before you start running your test jobs. Um, that works fine. Uh, the, the tricky bit there is you're letting a little bit of extra work that you're doing for test leak into this process, which, and, and if you, you know, if we went back to the other slide, you'd see that all of the, the test specific stuff we tried to keep after the production playbooks. This you'd have to do before the production playbooks. So it's introducing a delta between test and production, which you have to be really careful about um, accounting for. Um, so for speculative image building, basically it's the same thing. I think these slides are in fact the same, uh, depending with different titles. So again, if you're, if you're using Docker build and your images are on Docker Hub, then you can, then that's fine. Otherwise you wanna use Podman build or Builda or any of the other things that, that use a Podman-like build system. Uh, and then once again, uh, you could sideload the images into the, into the, the uh, local container environment. Now, if you're using Kubernetes, um, for, so like uh, the, the Docker runtime in Kubernetes is deprecated now, so uh, there, there was a way to do that, but um, we're not maintaining it anymore in OpenDev, and I'm not going to talk about it because it's not really relevant now. Um, but Containerd is there, so you should be able to configure Containerd to use the build set registry underneath Kubernetes. So this is kind of some, some minor surgery you're doing on the Kubernetes environment um, before you use it. But um, for the testing that we're doing in OpenDev that relates to Kubernetes, that works for us, so, so that's great. Um, another way is, again, the sort of, I'm gonna keep calling it side loading because that, that's what it feels like. Um, so say you're using kind or something like that. You can, you can tell kind like, hey, stage these images inside of your environment. Um, so that works. Um, and then uh, the, the, the sort of nuclear option is the mutating admission controller, uh, which you can stick inside of your Kubernetes cluster. And um, that's a thing that uh, isn't really the focus of this talk, but I am giving a talk about it tomorrow on the lightning talk stage in the open info marketplace. Uh, it's basically, um, all of this, but really focused on the Kubernetes specific use case. So uh, it does a lot of the work for you uh, transparently for the building and the deployment of the images. Um, so come and check that out if you're interested. But you know, in general, that is an option as well. You can use a mutating admission controller to, to switch around which actual images the, the Kubernetes system uses. So uh, if you'd like to learn more about Zool, um, Zulca.org is uh, our project's website. Uh, OpenDev is the thing that I've been talking about that hosts all of this stuff. Uh, Cogate is uh, up and running. It's uh, in sort of a beta test mode, so if you wanna look at it and, and uh, uh, ask me about it, I'd be happy to hear about that. And um, that's my contact information. Feel free to contact me about anything. And I think we have 20 seconds um, for any questions. Okay, I'm just gonna keep that sticker then, so. All right, thanks, uh, and there's, uh, I've got like some pamphlets about Zool and stuff uh, up here if you'd like them as well. So, uh, thank you very much.